Hey guys, Mike Chen here in London. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. I've been pretty jet lagged, so I haven't been to sleep yet. So I figured this would be a good time for breakfast slash dinner for me. And that's why I'm here, tongue and brisket. And these guys are open bright and early, the home of real salt beef. I love salt beef so much and haven't had it since I've been here. sandwich since I left London last time and this thing is beautiful layers of salted beef brisket there's some tongue in here sauerkraut pickles cheese mustard on rye I am so happy I stayed up for this and this one paired with spicy mustard crunch Pickles, cheese, got the sourness from the sauerkraut and the salted beef is just delightful. Let me try a piece on its own. Mm. Oh, I love that so much. It's tender, it's juicy, it's succulent. Of course, salty, but not overly so. The saltiness actually enhances the flavor of the beef and there's a subtle sweetness to it as well. And this thing has a certain richness that's just deeply satisfying. I just took a bite of the tongue, and that is one tender piece of meat. Wow, the brisket has a nice chew to it. Tongue, well, it pretty much melts on your tongue. This is the greatest sandwich. This place does it so well. It feels like a, like a one year craving itch has just been scratched. Gotta get another one of those before I leave. Now, I can go to bed for a little bit. See you for lunch. All right, got some sleep, went for a run, and this food day is gonna be a lot of fun. First up, going to Gordon Ramsay's All You Can Eat Pizza Buffet, and then heading to a restaurant that pretty much everyone I, I met in the UK told me to go to. And before heading out, a big shout out and thank you to the sponsor of this video, AG1. I've been making AG1 a part of my morning for the past several years now, and this has been such an easy habit for me to keep, mainly because I feel better. In doing what I do, I need a lot of energy, and AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, plant-based enzymes that help support digestion and overall gut health. And basically, one scoop or one travel pack of AG1, eight to 12 ounces of water, Drink. And that's it, my daily nutritional basis is covered. Like I said, I need a lot of energy. I don't like crashing during the day. AG1 has magnesium, B vitamins, that support sustained energy throughout the day without the crash you get from caffeine. And I'm really not a big fan of fruits. AG1 gives me my daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, to support my overall immune health. Since I've been taking AG1, I got some from my parents, now they take it regularly. I've introduced this to my friends, now they love it. And these travel packs are especially great on the go. It's just such a convenient way to stay healthy. So if you want to give it a try, go to my link down below. You'll get a free one-year supply of immune-supporting D3K2 and five free travel packs with your order. And for me, new places, spaces, and especially food can be hard on the gut. That's why these are so nice. I get high-quality multivitamins, pre-probiotics, and much, much more no matter where I am. And speaking of foods for my gut, let's go get some pizza. Lunch today is gonna to be at a fun place. Gordon Ramsay Pizza Buffet. So this is Street Pizza by Gordon Ramsay and bottomless pie is offered every single day at 17 pounds a person. And there's six different pies to choose from. There's a classic margarita, ham and pineapple, corn and chorizo, pepperoni, there's andua and zucchini, and a daily special. At first glance, the crust is very, very thin. Beautiful little pizza bubbles. And this one's the ham and pineapple. Mm. I know there's a lot of controversy about pineapple on pizza, but this is freaking awesome. I mean, I grew up in the Midwest. 
and we get Hawaiian pizza all the time. So sometimes I do like a juicy, sweet pineapple on my pizza, and that pineapple was definitely juicy. It was definitely sweet. The ham was delicious in quality. It was savory and fatty. The crust is very thin. And extremely light. This is a great quality pizza. Next up is corn and chorizo and some coriander. Scallions, giant cuts of chorizo. Okay, so wild mushroom. Ooh. <laughs> mushroom. And then this one is a vegan and do courgette pizza. This is really good. Hopping sweet corn, nice crunchy garlicky flavor from the scallions. Chorizo's thinly sliced and delicious. Kind of melts in your mouth a little bit. The cheese is mild, the corn is popping and sweet. Oh, I like it. This is actually vegan induya sausage and courgette, which is uh, zucchini. Some uh, balsamic vinegar on top and some pesto. This is definitely the toastiest of all the pizzas. What I thought was tomato sauce, lobs of really spicy chilies. This is pretty darn good. Again, I love how thin the crust is. There's a little nice crunchy pop from the onions. I don't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. That was delicious. What I'm liking about this pizza experience is that all the pizzas are super thin. So about three slices in, feels like I can eat a lot more. This is the mushroom with scallions. Very much resembling a Neapolitan pizza. Mushroom pizza, very, very earthy. Juicy popping mushrooms. The cheese is nice. It's the same mozzarella they use on all the pizzas. That's really good. Probably my favorite might just be the pineapple ham pizza. Also, they have dips you can order for an additional two pound, and this is the garlic herb dip. Creamy, really garlicky and herby with a tad of sweetness. I mean, honestly, I think I, I do like the Papa John garlic butter better, but not bad. This looks like an awesome couple slices. The margarita and the pepperoni, and they add chili flakes on here already. That's always a good sign. So margarita, fresh basil, mozzarella, gooey sauce. Again, that beautiful thin crust. So you can see the stretchy cheese on this margarita. Okay, the margarita, I love the cheese. I feel like the sauce is way too much. Really strong tomato sauce, very tangy, and it pretty much overpowers every other flavor of the pizza, including the cheese, the basil. All you're tasting is the sauce. I think definitely less sauce would have done this pizza a lot of good. Pepperoni is awesome. I haven't got to the sauciest part of this slice yet, but the pepperoni is toasty, it's crispy. Nice little pools of spicy oil in its crevices. I love the addition of the chili peppers. But when you get to the top, squeeze some of this out. All the sauce just kind of makes it a little too much. It's very sour and tangy. Now I'm really glad I have the dip because that richness and creaminess kind of balance out the acidity of the sauce. And that is one full round of pizza. My favorite, pineapple and ham. The ham was good, the pineapple's delicious. Oh, and the vegan slice, surprisingly yummy. Oh, also the corn and chorizo, delicious. Oh, it's also bottomless ice cream. This one's actually really good. Corn puree with chorizo. Mm. Love the chorizo on this. Also, there's slices of chicken on this as well. So what I noticed is that when this place gets busier, because there's only one piece of it, it's really hard to keep up with the demand. Staff here is awesome, super, super nice. Got another vegetarian. This one's really good. I think this place is awesome. I would definitely come back. So far, I think I've eaten over two pizzas, and they're so thin, I don't even feel like I'm half full. Pizzas usually show up piping hot. I love the crust, so airy and light, it's delicious. Different flavors, pretty good. I don't like how much sauce is on the margarita and pepperoni pizzas, and I think the dipping sauce, again, just tastes like ranch and some herbs. But overall, pizza quality, fantastic. Cheese is good, best part about these pizzas, the crust is awesome. I would definitely come back. Actually, I did end up getting the ice cream. Creamy vanilla sauce. I don't know if this is a Gordon Ramsay recipe. That's really good. And if you want to refill, just go up to the machine right on the counter. There's syrup right there as well. And all you can eat ice cream 
four pounds. Gotta eat at least three of these, probably. I am here at Happy London. This place is located in central London, right in the heart of the tourist district. So it does seem like a very touristy place, but this place won best restaurant in London in 2002 from the British Restaurant Award. As much as this place gives off a kind of a Applebee's vibe, food looks really good. Also, true to his name, the servers are really, really friendly and happy. I got a carbonara pasta that they make in that little mini Parmesan cheese wheel, and they put it on your plate table side. Some ham and Parmesan cheese on top. This actually looks like pretty darn good pasta. I mean, it looks very, very cheesy. Every single strand of pasta, it's just covered in cheese. It tastes like it looks very cheesy bowl of pasta. The pasta tossed directly in the Parmesan cheese wheel is coated in a luscious, creamy, rich sauce created from the melting Parmesan. And the cheese infuses the pasta with a deep, nutty, and slightly salty flavor. The pasta is also cooked very well, and the warmth of the pasta really helps amplify the aroma of the aged Parmesan, giving you a very robust flavor profile. I love really cheesy noodles. I do feel like I could use a little bit of heat. Okay, bring this around with me everywhere. Mike's hot oil. You used up over half of this already. Try some on the carbonara pasta. Add a little bit of kick. That's amazing how perfectly the hot oil goes on the pasta. First of all, this thing is uber spicy and it really helps cut through the richness, really amplifies the flavor of the cheese as well. I know it's my own hot oil, but this is such a good combo. And if you want to get this, micehotoil.com. Next, let's try the cheesy burger. So this thing came with a giant syringe of gooey, melty cheese and they injected right into the burger. Hot, melty, gooey cheese. Pretty looking pink patty with some sauteed onions on the bottom. I can't believe I'm about to say this, and probably the only time in my life I've ever said this. The worst part of this burger is the bacon. It's extremely tough. It's like eating a piece of jerky. Burger patty texture. Kind of reminds me of a chorizo sausage. Really don't get much beef flavor from the patty. I think the best part about this is the gooey cheese. Yeah, this is not a great burger. But that was a fun little restaurant. And right around the corner from them, a lot of my chef friends in London recommend that I go try Fellow. This place looks like they serve modern European food. It's got an open kitchen. Tons of people here at about 3.30 p.m. Like pretty much a full house. So one of the dishes they recommended, one of the most popular dishes here is the mushroom parfait. So it's made with homegrown lion's mane mushrooms that they grow out of a bag and roasted shiitake. This is phenomenal. Snappy, juicy, sweet with a delightful earthy flavor. The parfait is smoky, creamy, really rich, earthy, robust flavors with some pickled onions just to cut into the richness a little bit. And the shiitake adds such a nice smoky twist. Flavors are absolutely amazing. Put that on a crispy buttered toast. Never had anything like this before. It's, it's pretty much mushroomy butter. That's both rich and refreshing. Yeah, that's a must get if you ever come here. Another thing they recommended is the smoked sausage. And this is something they make in-house. Little crunchy fried onions on top. The sauce itself is really rich, a little vinegary. The sausage is smoky, it's pretty tender. It's just like a smoky meatball. Definitely a really rich little dish though. This is really interesting. This is their version of cabbage cooked five different ways. So on top, there's fried outer layer of the cabbage. Inside is confit cabbage. There's also sous vide chestnuts. On the bottom, there's lemon miso and black garlic puree. 
I think if you're not a fan of cabbage and you try this dish, if you're still not a fan of cabbage after that, you're just never gonna like cabbage. This is about as delicious as I've ever tasted cabbage. It's cooking a way where I didn't think cabbage could taste this good. This is absolutely one of the best cabbage dishes I've ever had in my life. But it tastes like a gourmet meal. Cabbage confit is all sorts of tender and smoky. You get a beautiful crunch from the fried cabbage on top, which are just like little crispy cabbage chips. Inside, you got the shaved chestnuts. Also some walnuts, I think, yeah. Pickled walnuts, all soaked in this lemony, umami-filled miso sauce. Mix in the black garlic puree for some extra smokiness and garlicky flavor. From texture to flavor and everything in between, it's just magnificent. Mm. Yeah, if you're ever in London, you gotta come try this dish. Oh, this I'm so excited about. This is a plate of mussels, basically cooked in bacon butter. So they take their bacon trimmings and they pretty much make a butter out of it. And that is what the mussels are cooked in. Oh my goodness. This looks and smells incredible. Grab some of that sauce with the mussels. Those are some of the best mussels you will ever have. First of all, the mussels themselves, ever so delicate. The sauce on the bottom is buttery. You can taste the wine. There's a good amount of citrus to cut into the richness of the sauce, and the mussels are just the most succulent you will ever have. You get a wonderful, subtle sweetness from the mussels. Also, this might be one of the first times I, I had mussels where it's cleaning so well. Not a speck of sand in here. There's a tiny bit of brininess to this as well. They put a piece of bread on the bottom and they call this a moist maker. Of course, an homage to friends. That's so good. Bread still retains a nice chew and you get a full on hit of that delicious citrusy buttery sauce. Yeah, these are a must try. Best mussels I've ever had by far. It's cooked just the most perfect as can be. Not rubbery, not slimy, perfect. This next dish is one of the highlights of this restaurant. It's beautiful and intimidating at the same time. It's a giant cod head. And I love the reason why they started serving this because nobody was eating a cod head. So the head of the cod was just thrown away. So this restaurant decided to cook it up and cook it up they did. Roasted beautifully. I smell the char. I smell all that delicious aroma from the fish and it's covered in homemade sriracha emulsion. And this thing is just a monster. Look at his teeth, giant eyeball. And this is a cod collar. That's a good piece of meat on its own. Collar meat is super, super good. Mm. It's smoky, it's charred. It's so tender. Also, this homemade sriracha sauce is just fantastic. Spicy, creamy, smoky, perfect for this fish. Mm. Nice amount of heat on this as well, but doesn't at all cover up the mild sweet flavor of the cod. This is the good stuff right here. The fish cheek. This is some of the tenderest meat on the fish and a little gelatinous -y too. Dunk that in the sauce. Oh my gosh. That's one of the best bites of meat on this fish. Incredibly tender and succulent. Again, beautiful flaky meat with that gorgeous mild sweet flavor. Mm. You get a little hint of bitterness from the char of the fish. There's so much good meat on the head of a fish, especially a codfish where the meat is just incredibly delicate. You get a lot of different textures that you wouldn't get from other parts of the fish. Here, the jaw of the fish right here. Just go ahead and gnaw on the bone. Mm. Very gelatinous, nice fatty flavor to this as well. This has been one of my favorite restaurants here in London. Everyone I met here, amazingly nice. Big shout out to AJ, great meeting you my friend. The food is fantastic, keep up the awesome work. I know this is kind of in a touristy area, but this restaurant, a must try whenever you are in London. Get the fish head. I had to check out the dessert. One is a soft serve with balsamic strawberry on top. It looks like a little floating cloud. This looks absolutely fabulous. Oh my God.
This is the best soft serve I've ever had. How is this even soft serve? Try it with some strawberries. Mm, you must get this dessert. Soft serve is sweet, milky. Rich, creamy, almost like a milky umami ness to it. That sets it apart from any soft serve I've ever had. And I just had one from Gordon Ramsay's restaurant this morning. That one tastes like anything you'll find from any soft serve or McDonald's in the world. This is just luxurious. This is really interesting. This restaurant is all about sustainability and they turn cheese whey, which is a byproduct when you're making cheese, and they turn it into a whey tart with a little ice cream on the side. What the bloody heck? This is mind blowing. It tastes like the world's most velvety caramel cheesecake. That's what it tastes like. It's mind blowingly soaky. It's better than most, if not all the cheesecakes I've ever had in my life. Yeah, this is a must try as well. You're in London. You gotta come to this restaurant, get the mushroom parfait, gotta get the mussels, get the fish head, and you gotta try the dessert. I'm gonna put this on my must, 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 must try list. That wraps up another fantastic food day here in London. All the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.